Welcome back. Nearly 12,000 helicopters saw action in Vietnam. By war's end, nearly half of the aircraft and 5,000 pilots and crew members would be lost. Flying a helicopter was a dangerous mission, and these first-hand accounts give a sense of the fortitude it took to do the job. Let's take a look. About half the time we were doing downed aircraft recovery, so to, to work with a downed aircraft recovery, we would be sitting back at our base camp or our hooches, getting a suntan or reading a book or taking a nap or whatever, and they would blow a, uh, a horn in the operations center and we would have one minute to get off the ground. Most of the time we were doing uh, things like logistic support. Uh, we threw a lot of combat assaults, which is a direct insertion of infantry into combat. Uh, we did a, a lot of things with special operations, marine recon. Those are the basic types of missions that we flew. Our mission was to go out to where the wounded were located. Uh, I flew uh, 2,752 missions. Uh, combat missions and evacuated uh, 2,900 and I think 32 patients. In most cases, we knew we were going to recover a downed aircraft that was probably shot down. Nobody lands in the middle of bad guy country purposely. They, they do it because they have to. Basically, we'd get a call from a ground unit, uh, either Vietnamese or, or American, and we'd go out to the site of the wounding and they would uh, try to secure an area for us to land and uh, we oftentimes took hits. Uh, th those pictures that you saw of the guy standing on the ground with his weapon or waving us in into tiny holes in the jungle or out in the rice paddies, uh, that's where we picked the wounded up. Nineteen years, go years old, going on twenty. Uh, first lieutenant got promoted to captain in April of 69. I think the average age of the pilot over there was about 23, and I was their flight leader at 20 and turned 21 when I was in country. I was 28 years old when I went over the first time, was a brand new captain, and then I was 32 when I went back for my second tour. Um, my, my first encounter with, uh, with a hot LZ was, was during my, uh, what we call, in-country orientation. Uh, it was a two-ship landing zone, and the first aircraft, the lead aircraft, was blown up uh, in the landing zone, which blocked anybody else from being able to get in. Personally, I don't remember the first time I was shot at. We expected to be shot at every time we got in the seat and strapped down the aircraft, and in most cases, our expectation was, was correct. Uh, we would approach the area at about 1,000 feet, uh, drop the collective on the helicopter, and, and go into a, about a 2,000 feet a minute rate of descent at 100 knots and try to hold that almost to the ground. A lot of times you only had uh, like 15 or 20 seconds on the ground uh, to discharge your troops, let them offload uh, before it was time for you to leave because the next flight coming in was right behind you. The method we used was try to get in and get out as fast as we could because if you spent much time on the ground or you were slow approaching or taking off, you were most vulnerable at that time. A, uh, an approach to an LZ that was uh, a noisy, confusing, um, tension-raising experience every time. You, you never got used to the, uh, to the loud noise and the, the distractions. Gunfire uh, going into a landing zone actually sounded like popcorn. So if you listen to a popcorn popper on your stove uh, or in the microwave, that's what gunfire sounded like as you were landing. round came up and bounced off the collective and hit my left thumb here and lacerated it. And then something uh, uh, hit me hard. My head flew back and hit the back of the seat. Uh, the, the, the lead aircraft was, was uh, blown up in the landing zone. Uh, the command and control aircraft, which was, had the uh, unit commander in it, uh, basically told us to break off the approach. We had four more helicopters with troops told us to break off the approach and not land. Uh, we ignored that. I was the, the lead flight of the lead aircraft for the first bridge, and my number two aircraft got a little bit too close, and he actually cut my tail rudder off as we, as we hit the landing zone. What had happened, a bullet had come through the windshield down here where it bolts into the frame, 
hit my helmet right here between my eyes and came out back here behind my ear. And uh, when it came through, it brought a bunch of metal and plexiglass with it and hit me here. It, it filled my left eye full of metal, of metal and plexiglass, had a piece about that big sticking right here in the corner. We ignored that and went ahead and landed anyway. Uh, discharge our troops for security for the people on the ground, but more importantly, we landed to pick up the wounded uh, to get them to emergent, you know, to, uh, to medical care. Uh, in doing that, somebody had to get out of the helicopter, and that's when we discovered that, you know, not only were there mines and booby traps, but we were being shot at as well. We immediately went subconsciously into the emergency procedure for a loss of tail rotor control. So I started doing that and we got turned around about 180 degrees and I think I was about six feet eyeball to eyeball with the pilot and the other aircraft and said, this isn't right. But we did it and uh, got the wounded crew out and uh, to, the, to the nearest hospital. Cut my nose and it chipped out a hole in my head up here and chipped out a hole back here. But uh, I spent five days in the hospital and uh, was back flying again.